PBA leak is done. So here's my recap. First of all, the format. So our team, Snickers Swagger Wonders, was Parker Bone, Walter Ray Williams, BJ Moore, Jason Sterner, and myself. We bowled six team games to qualify for the TV finals. After that, we bowled a one game Baker match on TV and the winner moves on, so on and so forth. Uh, pretty simple. So, qualifying. Uh, we struggled. We, I would say we bowled okay as a team, but we never ha really had any long strings. Like we would go strike, spare, double, Nobody would really get it going to where we would would have any anything, and I think as a team we were pretty consistent, but that didn't really help us any. Um, Sterner ended out being our our best player in the qualifying, and I think everyone else was, was fairly. Well, the race struggled a little bit, but other than that, we were were fairly even. Um, I. I kind of struggled a little bit. I got off to a bad start physically, threw some couple bad shots. Uh, after that, I felt like I got lined up pretty pretty well. But it was it was one of those days where, all right, I have a I feel like I have a good look. I get a, a double or a turkey early on in the game. Then a little transition happens, and I get a couple nines, make a move, get on the other side of the transition, and then I couldn't strike. So a lot of games I would. I would have like five nine counts and shoot two T, and lanes weren't easy, but you still have obviously with the best bowlers in the world, you still have people shooting two two fifty every game, and we didn't really go anywhere just because we couldn't we couldn't shoot two two fifty. Like we had two, I think two big games uh, individually. And, but never really put anything together as a team. Uh, I think our hard game was uh, 1100 as a five-man team, which isn't bad, but it wasn't really enough to move us anywhere. So we finished fifth in our division, whatever, made it to TV, just got to run the ladder basically. So we were, we were still optimistic and it's, it's a one, uh, one match game, so anything can happen. And it's in front of one of the best crowds in bowling, uh, one of the most insane crowds in bowling. So if you get a little momentum, absolutely anything can happen. Um, so we got done with qualifying, and we're we're real looking forward to um, yeah to getting on the show and getting bowling there. So the way the the day of the show worked, we bowl qualifying in the morning. Actually, through most of the day, it took us like five hours to bowl the six games. Uh, of qualifying, so uh, because we bought five man teams, so it was quite a long day. After that, we had a short break, then we had half an hour of open practice on the TV pair the two two lanes they use for, for TV. Went over there, and the thing about the bowling center here is the, the part of the bowling center where we bought uh, qualifying is pretty old. And the TV set is pretty new, so they play completely different. The old lanes hook a lot, there's a lot of friction, so a lot of the times you will actually see your your ball not want to hook because it's losing all its energy too too soon, which makes it kind of tricky. And then we go to the TV pair and the ball gets down lane, hooks on the back end, and that's why you a lot of times you see some some better scores on on TV here than you do in in qualifying, simply because of uh, of how much cleaner and easier it is to make your ball hook on the TV lanes. So we got that 30 minute practice. 30 minutes later, we come back and have our team's official practice session before the TV show. So that was 10 minutes with uh, us and the Adam Splitters, the number four seats, on the on the lanes, and we. You get a few shots to kind of figure out what you want to do. Felt like I had a decent look. I was going between either my sense soul or my infinite physics. 
and after that practice I was pretty confident I was going to throw the infinite physics. Then when we come back 10 minutes before the show, everyone gets one shot on each lane. So in the meantime we can warm up all we want over on the, uh, the other side of the bowling center. So we can stay loose, but you only get one shot on each lane to get lined up. So I figured I would kind of try playing them where I played them in practice and got one shot to, to get lined up. I went, I think I went high flush on, on the right lane and left the 710 on the, on the left lane. And I'm like, all right, gotta go. That's, um, that's probably close enough. So first match on TV. And here's a little, little uh, our team has not done very well in this competition. I actually think it's been almost since one of the first years of the PBA League, which is in its, what, ninth or 10th year. It's been almost since the beginning, since our team has won a match on TV. So we're, we're pretty big on the dogs. And we're bowling the Adams players, which is probably, despite them only being the four seeds, probably one of the best teams and a team that's won the league before. We're bowling those guys, but the first game we came out absolutely firing. Well, the race started out with strike. I got out in the second frame, and the crowd is so loud that it's really hard to it's hard to focus, hard to get your heart rate down. At the same time, you only have there's a 25 second shot clock, so you have to from it's your turn. So you let go of the ball. You only have 25 seconds, which is enough to get ready and, and throw the ball, but under that pressure, with that many eyes on you, the crowd going crazy, it's really hard to get your get calm and get, get settled in mentally and with your heart rate and everything in 25 seconds. So I felt like I got up there, I was kind of a little bit nervous, but got up there managed to somehow make it to the end of the approach and throw the ball in, in the direction I wanted it and I struck. And uh, yeah, and uh, it turned out we, we ended up having a front nine that game. So I made a run of 300, that was, that was pretty cool. And we won our first match. So again, crowd started getting behind us. We, we bought that big game, we won the first match. So we kind of get the crowd behind us and you start building some momentum and with a crowd that crazy that momentum is really a big thing. So next game, we um, lanes transitioned a little bit, obviously, and the scores ended up being a lot lower. I threw a bad shot on the right lane, just simply grabbed it, and yeah, turned into an open. Luckily, everybody struggled that game, so it wasn't that big of a deal. And then I managed to, to strike on the left lane. Uh, again, one of those were I felt, I probably only felt 60 or 70 percent uh, as calm as I wanted to be for for that shot. But again, it's just not enough time to to get that extra heart rate down like you would in a normal tournament where you just take more time. So I got up there and I, again, I managed to tell myself, I just make sure you get it to the right. That's all you got to do, get it to the right let go of it and I threw a really good shot and that's um, it's kind of like you're uh, at that point at that point your your uh, muscle memory and everything you've practiced just kind of takes over so it doesn't it, it it's more just on instinct than anything else luckily my instincts were pretty decent that shot so <laughs> um, and we ended up getting a little fortunate and winning 170 something to 160 so we won again that's that it was really cool then we're bowling the Dallas Strikers which again one of the best teams in the league Norm Dukes the the manager they have Tommy Jones Bill O'Neill just a really good team and we got off to a little bit of a slower start again I threw it bad I missed left on the left lane or on the right lane and I don't know how much of it was me and or me needing to be further left on that lane but either way i didn't throw the best shot left the six seven ten and normally if i have a little more time a little less pressure 
I'm probably only going for two. That's the smart move in the second frame. But I think with the pressure, the stress, fear of letting the team down and everything, I went up there and I lined up and I, I went for it. And luckily I made it so I didn't look like an idiot. But but yeah, that's just what, what kind of what pressure uh, does to you. you. You make a decision that on it logically I shouldn't have gone for that. I should just because when you go for it you can end up losing count because you only get one or or you miss it completely or whatever but managed to make it so really good spare shot at the right time <laughs> but yeah and then we struggle a little bit with with getting some strikes together uh, I got up in the in the seventh frame where we were a little bit behind managed to, to settle down a little bit better throw it to the right and it came back and hooked and managed to strike so four strikes out of six shots was, was pretty good I'm um, uh, overall happy with my performance on on TV considering how how nervous and how uh, like how much up here you are rather than being calm and nice and relaxed down here um, ultimately we had a chance Parker needed to double in the tenth for us to win got the first one after making a ball change in the 10th frame, which was pretty gutsy, and then just missed a little, little left, second one in the 10th, didn't make it back, so too bad, but at the same time a really fun time, really good run with the team, and it was pretty awesome to, to win some matches on TV with the team, so that was happy we got to do that, happy that I know Johnny, our manager, John Petrackley, is really um, no, it's bugged him not having any success with in this team event. So making, being able to give him a couple wins on TV was really cool. So it's a really, really great experience, unique experience. Like this crowd is something special, and I don't think you can really put it into words how how uh, how it is being up on the approach, getting ready to to throw a shot in front of the uh, Bopo crowd definitely something I want to come back to hopefully I get to come back and definitely something I'll I'll remember um, for the rest of my career for the rest of my life it's a very unique experience but yeah that was kind of my explanation of what how the PBA league functions the things you don't see on TV the thoughts that go through our uh, minds while we're we're bowling on TV with the crowd and everything how it is bowling on TV and how it is bowling on TV at this event versus bowling on TV in a different event where the crowd is silent and everything and it's just crazy it's a really really fun really hope I get to come back but thanks for watching if you have any questions about bowling on TV PBA League whatever put them in the comments I'll make sure to check them answer them and subscribe Make sure you subscribe, make sure you follow us on social media, and we'll be back with a lot more videos. I really appreciate you guys tuning in, rooting on me, and watching, watching the videos. So, thanks guys.